officer. Uh, today I'm joined with Rear Admiral Shannon Gilry, Commander, 5th Coast Guard District, as well as Colonel Roland L. Butler, Jr., Superintendent, Maryland State Police. Uh, tonight we're going to hear from uh, a brief statement from each of them on current updates. And after that, we'll be able to take a few questions, uh, but we do need to keep it brief because we want to get these folks back to work. Uh, with that, I'd like to introduce Rear Admiral Shannon Gilry. Hey, good evening, everyone. First, I'd like to say thank you to all of the first responders that have come out today to assist in looking for these individuals. We've had tremendous support across the state and county and city and federal enterprise. You've seen for yourself the helicopters flying over, the small boats that are out there, the Coast Guard cutter that's out there, the boats that go back and forth bringing people out on scene to search for these individuals. So thank you to those, this entire community for helping in that regard. Second, I want to say thank you to the community for the outpouring of support to those first responders and in particular the outpouring of support and prayers and support for the families of the six individuals. So I would like to announce tonight that based on the length of time that we've gone in the search, the extensive search efforts that we've put into it, the water temperature that at this point we do not believe that we're going to find any of these individuals still alive. And so this evening at around uh, 7.30, we are going to suspend the active search and rescue efforts. Coast Guard's not going away. None of our partners are going away. But we're just going to transition to a different phase. And so I'm going to turn it over to Colonel Butler, please. Good evening, and thank you all for being here to echo the Admiral's comments here. We really appreciate the support from the community to all the first responders here. We appreciate your patience in allowing us to do the best job possible and get the information as it comes up. At this point, as the Admiral said, we're going away from the search and rescue portion to a recovery operation. The changing conditions out there have made it dangerous for the first responders, the divers in the water. We will still have surface ships out overnight at 0600 hours tomorrow. We were hoping to put divers in the water and begin a more detailed search to do our very best to recover those six missing people. Thank you. With that, we have time for just a few questions. We know there's a lot of questions uh, that still have to be answered, and uh, we do have time for just a few. So uh, if we can take a few. Please. So do we think it's it's still just six? That there's talk of maybe other cars on the bridge. All, yes, all the information we have is just six individuals. Got it. Yes, sir. Can, can you go into detail uh, about how difficult this might be for the recovery uh, phase of this now? Like, what kind of challenges are you up against? Well, I'll start by saying I'm going to turn it over to the experts on diving. I'm not an expert on diving, but we've got very difficult water temperatures. You have structures from the bridge that are in the water that can move with the tides and currents, making that dangerous for divers and people in the water to actually try to do recovery. And we do not want to injure any of these first responders in this recovery effort. We, we absolutely want to be as safe as possible for everyone involved in this. And I'll, I'll let see Colonel Brown, is anything you must add? Can you go into specifics about what the search and rescue entailed? Like, were there scuba divers or was everything above water, sonar, any sort of equipment that might have been utilized over the past 12 hours? From the outset, we moved all those resources in with dive teams from various state, local, and uh, county agencies. We also use sonar. We're doing our very best in some very difficult times and difficult conditions, which is why we're making that transition now. The last thing we want to do is put divers in the water with changing currents, low temperatures, very poor visibility, visibility, and so much metal and other unknown objects in the water. All it takes is one object to strike an individual, and all of a sudden we have a first responder trying to recover another first responder. I think at 0600 we'll find ourselves in a better position to understand the dynamics of what we're dealing with and to address the issue in a much safer manner. Did the authorities have six IDs now and have those victims each been contacted, those families I should say? I can't speak on that. That's still in the investigative portion of this. Can you speak to some of the difficulties in actually retrieving the remains 
have any remains been retrieved so far? We've also heard reports that there might be individuals trapped inside of vehicles, that there might be debris that has made it more challenging for FBI and other law enforcement to deploy. All of that is unknown at this point. And as I said, we have to cease operations. We can't start again until we can assure the safety of those divers and the rescue personnel that are going to participate in this. If we look at how challenging it is at a simple motor vehicle crash to extract an individual, I'm sure we can all imagine how much harder it is to do it in climate weather, when it's cold, under the water, with very limited to no visibility. So just to clarify, no remains have been removed thus far by search and rescue teams, other than the two who were rescued alive earlier? That is correct. So, Colonel, you're confident then that no other vehicles made it onto that bridge before the collapse, or as it was collapsing, I should say? Based upon the fact the original information that was provided, the Maryland Transportation Authority Police Department was able to shut down traffic. Is there the possibility that there was another vehicle on there, other than those vehicles involved in the construction process? I think we all would have to understand, yes, that's a distinct possibility. As unfortunate as it may be, it's a distinct possibility. However, we don't have any information to support that at this point. When you bring the divers out, do you have an idea of where these individuals are, if they were in cars or not, and do you know how long the recovery effort is going to take? We do not know at this point. I'm sure as you've seen some of the aerial photos, there is a tremendous amount of debris in the water, from containers hanging off ships. We have to make sure those are shored up. We're going to work with structural engineers to help them understand how to navigate and address the challenges of having bridge structure in the water that may be sharp, that could puncture a suit, that could puncture an airline. All of these are things that we must take our time with. Do you know where the victims are located in the water? This last question. Do you know where the victims are located in the water? Have you been able to find them yet, or if they're in cars or not? At this point, we do not know where they are, but we intend to give it our best effort to help these families find closure. How might inclement weather tomorrow impact the recovery efforts? Very clearly it could, but we're going to do everything in our power to help these families find closure. How stable has the boat been? How stable has the boat been? Miss, how do we get their names, titles, spelling? Does anybody have a name? Folks, we're going to be establishing a unified command, as well as a joint information center. And I know there's a lot of questions, and we're going to be providing that information where we will continue to provide updates. That is the extent of our updates tonight. We thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Tomorrow, when do you start to bring them tomorrow? I'm going to bring them tomorrow. I'm going to bring them tomorrow. I'm going to bring them tomorrow.